Have you ever held something in your hands, a phone, an appliance, even a car, and realized that if one tiny thing breaks, the entire product becomes useless? That unsettling feeling of, why can't I fix this, is at the core of a massive global problem. And today, that problem collides with something surprisingly hopeful, how Aptera is rewriting the future of repairability. Before we dive into the bigger issue, let's start with something simpler. Aptera's interior design. When I first looked at the new concepts, the inside of this vehicle felt like stepping a few years into the future. Clean lines, a modern minimalism, and an overall aesthetic that feels almost therapeutic to sit in. The only question that popped into my mind was one I'm sure many people quietly wonder, where are the cup holders? Somehow, that tiny detail becomes a fun mystery. You start looking around the renderings, imagining where a giant water bottle might eventually sit. But aside from that small curiosity, the interior options, especially the variations with red or gold accents, offer a refreshing personality. The red-accented version feels sporty and bold, while the gold offers a more luxurious, warm touch. They each create a different identity inside the same futuristic shell. But interior styling isn't actually the highlight of today's discussion. What really deserves our attention is something far more impactful. Aptera's approach to the right to repair and why this philosophy has the potential to reshape how we interact with the machines we depend on every day. One of the people behind the Aptera integration team explained something striking. The vehicle is being designed intentionally to be repairable and serviceable not just for dealerships and not only for specialized technicians, but for anyone, including independent repair shops and even owners themselves if they wish. That idea is surprisingly rare today. Think about the world we live in. For years, manufacturers have quietly moved toward products that are harder to open, more fragile, locked behind proprietary tools or software, and designed with components that fail just after the warranty expires. This isn't an accident. It's the result of a concept we all know too well, planned obsolescence. Companies design items with a specific shelf life because it guarantees repeat purchases. If a tiny component breaks and the product is intentionally engineered to be hard, if not impossible to repair, consumers are forced into buying something entirely new. And this design strategy has infected everything from smartphones to tractors. And the waste? Unimaginable. Every year, hundreds of millions of electronic devices are thrown away. We're talking 40 million tons of electronic waste globally. That's not just a statistic, it's a crisis. A crisis that affects people in developing countries who often dismantle this waste without protection, exposing themselves and their children to toxic materials. In response, a massive global movement has been gaining momentum. The right to repair movement pushes for one simple idea. If you own it, you should be able to fix it. This movement demands that manufacturers provide access to manuals, access to schematics, access to parts and tools, and fair pathways to software updates. Some states, like Massachusetts and California, have already passed laws requiring this. The federal government has also taken notice, with executive orders and FTC involvement supporting the movement. But while legislation forces compliance, some manufacturers plan to comply only at surface level. They might release manuals or tools as required, but still design products to be so frustratingly complex that owners will give up and rely on them anyway. We've already seen examples of how bad this problem can get. Consider the driver who hit a piece of road debris, damaging a coolant connection in his electric vehicle's battery pack. The broken component? a small plastic flange, something that in a reasonable world could be replaced for a few dollars. Instead, he was told the entire battery pack needed replacement for $16,000. But when an independent EV specialist looked at it, the fix cost only a few hundred dollars. The actual parts were nearly trivial. The challenge was simply diagnosing the problem, something the manufacturer refused to share information about. Or take farmers. Modern tractors are high-tech machines run by sophisticated software, 
and some companies refuse to allow farmers to repair their own equipment, even when they desperately need to during critical harvest seasons. Farmers have protested, hacked their own equipment, and demanded fairness. Their tractors, tools essential to feeding entire communities, are locked behind corporate control. These stories highlight a simple truth. Repairability is not a luxury. It's essential for livelihoods, sustainability, and the simple dignity of owning something fully. While other companies brace themselves for legal pressures, Aptera is doing something refreshing. They are designing for repairability from day one, not as a marketing slogan, not as an afterthought, but as a core design philosophy. They want owners, whether individuals or independent mechanics, to understand how the car works. They want people to feel empowered rather than dependent. This is almost unheard of in the modern era of sealed batteries, proprietary screws, locked diagnostics, and authorized repair only policies. What makes this exciting is that Abtera is trying to solve the problem at the design level. If you engineer something to be intuitive, modular, and accessible, then manuals and parts aren't merely compliance, they're actually usable tools. This design-first approach aligns with Abtera's sustainability mission. The longer a vehicle stays on the road, the fewer resources are wasted. Every year added to a car's life reduces emissions tied to manufacturing, assembly, and transportation. Repairability isn't just a convenience, it's a major environmental contributor. Imagine a future where cars don't get junked after one expensive repair estimate. Imagine vehicles that remain serviceable for decades. Aptera is building toward that future. What would be truly remarkable, and something I'm hoping for, is that the entire assembly and repair process becomes openly documented. Imagine a world where owners could watch detailed repair guides and understand exactly how their vehicle works piece by piece. A world where repair knowledge becomes shared, communal, and empowering. If official documentation doesn't fully materialize, there's a strong opportunity for the community to step in, creating an evolving online repair resource. That collective knowledge could become invaluable for future owners. Repair culture used to be normal. People fixed TVs, appliances, radios, and cars in their garages. Today, that culture is nearly extinct, not because people lack ability, but because products are intentionally designed to keep the public out. Aptera is one of the first modern companies trying to revive that lost culture. The right to repair movement isn't just about fixing things, it's about fairness, sustainability, independence, and the simple dignity of owning something fully. And seeing a company embrace that philosophy from the ground up is genuinely refreshing. So the big question becomes, how important is repairability to you when choosing the technology you invite into your life? Would you walk away from a product, like many have from certain tech companies, if it meant being locked out of repairs? Does a company's willingness to support repairability influence your trust in them? For many people, the answer is yes. And Abtera seems to understand that deeply.